February 16, 2021. Hello friends, my dear young ones. I am back with you again on this uh, series of 100 questions uh, with my short clips uh, featuring one question at a time. The question that I have chosen today is one of the most important and plaguing questions uh, that we have all our lives, most of our lives. The question is, how do we measure our worth in life? This is a question which uh, I struggle with very much because uh, at one level, it should never be a question. Why? Because uh, who knows what is the contract we signed when we took birth in this uh, earthly life? Uh, are we free souls who have come here to just have an experience with a purpose of our own? Or are we here in order to become part of a game of 6 billion or 7 billion people with a set of rules which are decided not often just by us but by mostly many people who are uh, in greater positions of influence over our earthly lives. So if uh, the question why should we even have to measure our worth in life uh, needs uh, to be introspected. It happens because very early on in life you all get programmed to dealing with scarcity. We are taught that anything that is of value is not available to everybody equally. We are taught that anything that is of value must be obtained through great struggle and competitive strife. And it is something that is not going to be available for all. So uh, we get programmed into this situation where we set up a few people who will be more worthy than us because the measures by which we select them are decided on the basis of who has more, who has less. and. Is that a question for a free spirit, a soul that gets born into this earth? So that's a more spiritual question. But uh, this is the genesis of the reason why we constantly question uh, our self-worth. Because we, we do not know our self-worth in absolute terms. We only learn to measure it in relative terms, relative to what others around us have, relative to the reference group that forms inside our lives. So this is the first thing that we need to realize when we question ourselves. Uh, unfortunately, many of us do not have the maturity in young age to be able to delve that deep into oneself and uh, realize that uh, this uh, artificial measure with what others have and what we have is not going to be helpful in the long run. And I can tell you today that I was uh, like that and uh, I'm past 60 now. And I now see how futile that uh, attempt to measure yourself by the standards of others was. Because in that process, I have lost a big part of my soul, a big part of my originality, because I have tried to conform. And through the conformance, I have tried to come to the top of the ladder. But it is not my ladder. It is a ladder which somebody else has set for me. So that is the big realization you must have uh, when you try and measure yourself. Uh, now it comes to the question of what do you measure yourself by and uh, when I look at this and I'm not speaking from my own wisdom but I'm speaking from the learnings that I've had from a number of uh, interesting uh, pieces of work by others. Uh, there was this particularly interesting uh, take I would like to recount uh, that uh, you can measure your life by A, uh, your career, the progress that you make in your profession and uh, ipso facto the amount of money that you end up making so measure uh, of success uh, the easily most objective and visible measure of success in this world happens to be through your financial attainments and through the trappings that you have through your profession uh, but uh, how much money is enough is becomes then a very key question uh, yeah a financial measure and uh, professional success seems to be the most important metric for your life then it is important to also realize that uh, there is never enough. Uh, the minute you attain a particular milestone, the next one is set for you within your organization or by your programmed mind. So I remember the time when I used to think when I was 30 that having 10 lakhs of rupees for life savings would be great. Uh, people would laugh at me and I laugh at me too uh, because at that time it seemed an awful amount of money. 
But uh, just 10 years later, the whole circumstances changed, opportunities grew, and other people were making a lot of money. So you, you get into that rat race, and then you want to do, uh, then suddenly a crore is not enough. Even 10 crores is not enough. Now, uh, the college that I come from, the IIT, it has uh, spawned so many billionaires. So even if you're worth 100 crores, it means nothing. Uh, in comparison with the people uh, who run Google or uh, who run Amazon and uh, who are making uh, hundreds of millions of dollars a year. So uh, beyond the point, uh, you will not win this race. Most of us are not going to win this race. So money by itself has never been uh, uh, a sufficient metric. And when you look at the likes of Warren Buffett, uh, who is easily one of the top 10 richest people in this world, he still measures uh, uh, himself by the amount of things or by the number of things that he does not need rather than the uh, uh, number of things that he needs. So he still drives his old uh, car which is 25 years old. Uh, he has a very simple life uh, which does not reflect or does not depend on the amount of money that he has made for his organization and for his shareholders. The second uh, measure and this is a measure which is more realistic and uh, it is available to everybody who does not uh, have the first metric is uh, success uh, in your relationships. How happy are you in your relationships and uh, how, uh, uh, how good a social circle uh, uh, have you created around you? So people, there are and many, many people I've seen who do not have uh, the outward appearances of being rich, but uh, who lead very, very fulfilling lives they have good friends, they have a ball of a time with their families, with their friends and by themselves too. So this is a measure which is more available to us. We have the freedom to pick uh, the relationships that we want to nurture and to enjoy and to invest in them because it is not a one way traffic. You have to give a lot to maintain quality relationships. But this is a far, far, far more fulfilling measure at all ages. Uh, it's something you can uh, have at young age when you're not earning. It's something you, will, you can have while you are an earning member. You can also have this measure when you're post your prime, post your economic prime. The third measure, and this I think is where it comes to the more self-actualized states of our life, is uh, the measure of what have you given back? Not what you have achieved, but what you have given back. So what are the three or four good things that you have contributed, which are not for your own self, but which are more for the community around you, more for the world? Have you given the world something new, uh, irrespective of whether you made money or not? Have you supported a good cause in a very tangible way? Have you invested a lot of your time and energy for a public good uh, that will not bring you recognition directly but it is something you do because it needs to be done because it is the right thing to do so the success that you have against the values that you have formed around humanity around your relationship with this world this is the third measure of success so i feel that we all have the ability to achieve our successes in at least two of these three metrics it is only the first metric of how much money you make that we may not always achieve because it is not entirely within our control. So uh, when you, no matter if you, are, if you are the top of your class or if you are surrounded by people who are far wealthier than you, and far more talented than you, uh, do not uh, despair. Just first of all, erase everything else from your life. Put yourself in the center of your life. You have to like what you are today. You have to respect yourself as a soul which has come to this world to gain an experience. And then decide that I am not going to do any harm in this world. I have come here to do something good or if not, to not do any harm. And then I would like to measure myself by A. The quality of the relationships that I build in my life. B the quality of contributions that I make to a larger good to make this world a better place. And C, I would like to measure myself by the degree of success that others are willing to confer upon me through my professional uh, growth and success. But the third one is not going to be the first measure of my life. If we do this, 
we are on the course to stay as peaceful and uh, fulfilled human beings irrespective of whether we make a million dollars or a billion dollars or we do not make much money and work in a philanthropic uh, not for profit uh, kind of a setting but we all have the means to decide and to attain our true worth in life i hope this uh, helps you it has helped me a lot in rethinking myself and finding my true purpose in life and not getting into the rat race that i can never win and many of you i am sure would be facing the same struggle that i have faced god bless you take care my young man